Hi, this is Nilton from craftofprogramming.com and in this video I'm going to talk to you about interaction-based testing using Mokito. So the idea here is to uh, introduce you the basic concepts related to interaction-based testing in general and I'm going to be talking about um, what uh, interaction-based testing really is um, and how that is different from um, state-based testing. I'm going to be talking about when to use interaction-based testing um, and also what are the properties of good um, interaction-based tests, uh, a bunch of don'ts, things that you should really pay attention to and not do when you're writing your uh, um, interaction-based tests, uh, some fundamental concepts about um, related to interaction-based tests, test doubles, as well as um, why would you use the Mokito framework because in the Java ecos ecosystem you actually have a few options on libraries and we're going to be discussing why uh, Mokito. So let's start with the very basics of what is an interaction-based test. So interaction-based test is typically a test that um, tests the interaction patterns between a component under tests and its collaborators. And typically what you do is here, like you see, you have your component under test, which again, is just a class. And uh, what you do here is you set um, an expected behavior on this component under test. Um, and then you verify the interaction pattern between this component under test and its collaborators. And the collaborators of a component under test are the immediate objects with which your component under test exchanges messages. So your component under test here is sending a message to object one, uh, and then object one sends a message to object two, and uh, object two then, um, uh, you know, then the component test sends a message to object two, this guy gets another message from object three. So you get the idea. There is a bunch of exchanges of messages between your component under test and its immediate objects, which are called collaborators. And what interactions-based testing is testing is that these messages were sent in the order that you uh, expected, as well as with the parameters um, and return types, um, you know, that you, um, you know, that you were, uh, that you set in your um, expected uh, behavior. So let's talk about when should you use um, the interaction-based testing um, style of testing. So basically, there are two general categories when you should use them, is when you're doing a type of um, uh, design style called TDD or test-driven design, or in the more general case, um, you know, when you just want to use the mocking framework to isolate your component under test. So let's talk about the test-driven design style here. So um, one way that you can use interaction-based testing uh, is basically to help, um, you know, uh, uncover the design of the immediate objects of your component under test. So as I mentioned here, you have your component under test here, okay? And again, it exchanges a bunch of messages with its um, collaborators. These are just messages. And, um, you know, assume that this object, object one, object two, object three, which are instances of, you know, different classes, assume that these don't exist yet. And uh, what you're doing is you're creating, you know, um, mocks for these guys. You are uh, setting, you know, an expected um, behavior and defining interaction patterns or, you know, a sequence of messages exchanged between this component and intermediate objects. So as you can see, this is a style where you are, as you go, you are uh, setting ex behaviors here and a pattern of exchange of messages to help you extract abstractions and, and design, uh, you know, for the immediate objects of your component under test. So this is one very useful application of, um, you know, of mocking, um, you know, frameworks. The other case, which perhaps is more general, it's basically when you are trying to isolate the testing of your component under test. 
And uh, why would mocking frameworks or mocking these objects would be useful is because imagine that you have a component that test that perhaps is a providing a service and this component uses maybe an, a DAO, a data access object, which on the back has a database connection. Or maybe, you know, you're providing a service that uses um, an object that reads stuff off of a network socket, for, for instance. You get the idea. So when you want to test this, but you really don't want to be bothered with all of the wiring and initialization and instantiation of the immediate objects around your component on the test, perhaps because it's too complex or perhaps it's, um, it would slow down the startup time of your tests. So you just want to mock all of these collaborators, uh, isolate your test, and just focus on testing your component on the test. So that's the more general application for uh, interaction-based testing. So properties of good interaction-based tests, you know, um, it's basically observe good object-oriented principles because, uh, you know, you're writing uh, source code, tests are just source code, and, and these are, you know, test is typical test method. So you really want to make sure that, um, you know, tests are simple, tests are focused, i.e. it's just test, test one sim simple thing, no complicated, you know, uh, flow logic like ifs, L, uh, ifs or loops, you know, don't have any um, uh, uh, control statement, control flow statements, and make them readable and maintainable because again, these things last, for, tests last for a long time, um, and um, it's important that any developer that joins the team is able to understand the tests, is able to maintain it, is able to modify it, and so on and so forth. Okay. So I've got here a bunch of don'ts that are really important you should observe when writing, uh, you know, interaction-based tests. Don't mock value objects. You know, uh, value objects are just, you know, classes that don't typically don't have any behavior. They are just, you know, containers of data. Think of it like customer or on an order management system, an order. So don't mock these objects. If you see the need to mock these objects, then probably you should consider refactoring your design because there is probably something wrong with your design. Or, you know, you might want to consider introducing factories or builders uh, dedicated to your tests and just to instantiate, um, you know, um, object, value objects for your particular tests. Another important thing that you really should pay attention to is don't mock types that you don't own. I mean, again, these are general don'ts. There may be some cases where you might get away with, for example, uh, mocking objects that you don't own, but generally you should avoid doing that. And why should you not mock objects that you don't own? So what I mean by things that you don't own are typically objects that you don't compile yourself. They are not part of your source code. Uh, base, they typically come from a third-party library that you are using. So why you should not do that as a matter of principle? It's because when you are mocking uh, objects that you don't own, you are essentially guessing the behavior of these objects that you don't own, as well as the interaction patterns between these library objects and your uh, objects in your source code. And, um, you know, you may be wrong. You may have the, uh, you know, incorrect assumptions on, on this behavior, these interaction patterns. But even if you are right, uh, remember that uh, these third-party libraries may evolve because you may upgrade the library. And suddenly, the assumptions that you made about this behavior and these interaction patterns may not be valid anymore, but because you're mocking them, you will not know about them. You know, your tests is still pass, but then your production code will break because there is a mismatch between your assumptions in your interaction-based tests, um, you know, versus the actual, uh, the, the, the way that the library actually works. So, what, um, so, Pitt, so that's the main reasons why you should not do that. And typically, um, you know, when people 
use these libraries uh, to mock these libraries, these tend to lead to over-specified tests. Over-specified tests are, as you can imagine, you know, um, very brittle and, 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 you know, hard to, to, to write. And so people tend to shy away from these by creating basically wrappers around the um, third-party libraries. But again, um, you know, you are introducing a new abstraction and uh, just like before, this abstraction may not be, uh, may not have the same uh, semantics and behavior as the actual library. And uh, there is an effort to writing and maintaining these, you know, wrappers and this new abstraction layer. So this is usually why um, you know, there is this general advice of don't mock, um, you know, third-party library objects. So typically, the, uh, the, uh, the advice here is, you know, just, just write integration tests, um, you know, to test uh, this, um, you know, boundary between your source code and the libraries. Just if, if you cross the, you know, the library boundary, then just use integration-based tests as a matter of principle. Obviously, there are exceptions. These are, you know, general, it's a general advice. And lastly, don't mock everything, you know, obviously. Um, you know, as you start using mocks, especially in a, um, in a framework uh, like Mokito, it's so easy to, to specify the behavior of a mock and, the expect, expect, and to verify that those expectations. So there is a temptation to, to you know, because it's easy to just start mocking too much so just don't mock everything because remember, mocks are not real things. They are called test doubles. So pay attention to that. Obviously with practice, you, you will know what to mock and what not to mock. You know, like everything with practice, you start getting, um, you know, um, um, the, um, you know, the ba basic making good judgment calls about what to mock and what not to mock. So another thing that uh, it's very important uh, and it's concept here, it's test doubles. So let's define the types of test doubles and um, what is covered by mocking frameworks and what it's not covered by mocking frameworks. So test doubles typically are split in two categories. One it's manual and the other one is automatic. So manual are things that you are implementing yourself, you know, and those are typically uh, dummies, fakes and stubs. So dummies are, you know, nothing but um, an implement an object that is an implementation, say, of an interface that does nothing. You just do it. You implement that interface yourself so that you know your test uh, code can compile. A fake is an actual, um, you know, real object, but with a simplified implementation. I mean, the canonical example of a fake uh, test double is, for example, an in-memory database. So it's still, um, the, uh, you know, a real database. It still provides all of the um, uh, functionality as a, as a, you know, as a regular database backed by a file system, but it's in-memory so that, you know, it's faster to, to, to use and so on and to set up. Uh, uh, the third and last uh, test double type is a stub. And it's an object that you yourself implement and has hard-coded behavior, again, just to conform to your test. So none of these dummy, fake, and stub manual test doubles are typically the subject of mocking frameworks. Mocking frameworks typically deal with the um, mocks and spies. And mocks and spies are really the subject of mocking frameworks, and that's the ones that we're going to be covering uh, in this uh, course. So a mock is the canonical, fundamental core object or concept, uh, um, you know, test double concept that any mocking framework supports. And um, it's essentially an object that allows you to set, you know, to specify an expected behavior and then allows you to verify that that behavior is actually met, uh, you know, in your test. And this is the, you know, sort of the bread and butter, the core concept of mocking frameworks is to make it easy to utilize mocks 
set expect behaviors and then to verify expectations. Another special type of mock is called a spy. And a spy is nothing but a proxy to a real object where some of the methods are stub and some of the methods are actually real methods. Um, and, um, you know, um, we're going to see cases where, you know, it's useful to uh, use a spy. Um, so, so that's basically the types of test doubles. And again, mocks and spies are typically uh, the objects that are created um, uh, by, you know, mocking frameworks. So um, lastly, let's see why would you use Mokito? I mean, there are a bunch of, in the Java ecosystem, uh, mocking frameworks. EasyMock comes to mind. Uh, TestNG is another one very popular. Why Mokito? So I personally find Mokito very uh, simple and elegant and, and with very little boilerplate. It's very easy, as you will see, to set up a mock to set its uh, expected behavior and to verify its expectations with little ceremony, very little code. It's very simple and elegant. Um, and that's why, you know, I really recommend and I'm using it for this course. Uh, also, something that is, you know, very um, objective um, and not subjective is that it's a very stable and mature platform that's been around for a while with, a, you know, very large community support. Um, so, I think that gives you a pretty good, I uh, hope, uh, overview of, um, you know, when to use interaction-based tests, what they are, properties of good, um, you know, interaction-based tests, the don'ts, the general guiding principles of things you should not do uh, when mocking, as well as the fundamental concepts for test doubles and why should we use Mokito. Um, so I hope you found this conceptual uh, framework useful. Um, now it's time to jump into code and start writing some mocks. I am Nilton from craftofprogramming.com. Thanks for watching.